to another artifact corner. Today we will be looking at three lovely portraits taken in the 1860s. The first is of Betsy Delord. This picture was taken in 1864 following the death of her second husband, William Swetland. This was not uncommon to hire a photographer to document important events in people's lives, including funerals. Betsy is pictured in front of our gate leading up to the front door of the home. The second portrait is of an unknown woman, probably again taken around the mid-1860s. She is seated and holding a purse and a handkerchief. In this portrait, we can see the intricate detail on her skirt, which is adorned with lace and silk or satin ribbon. The third and final portrait is of a young man and woman, again, probably taken in the mid-1860s. The man is standing while the woman is seated. All three of these portraits show women in clothes that would have been considered some of their finer clothing since they were having their portraits taken. Let's explore women's fashion in the American Civil War period. Every woman in the American Civil War period would have gotten dressed in the morning in pretty much the same way. You would start with a chemise. A chemise is a cotton or linen undergarment that was worn to protect your body and your outer clothes from sweat. The next garment that you would don would be a pair of drawers. Drawers were just coming into fashion in the early to mid 1860s, and so some women would have chosen not to wear them, but that was a personal preference. These would be worn for warmth and also for comfort under crinoline skirts. Then you would put on your stockings. No self-respecting woman would leave the house without her stockings, which would come above the knee and be held in place with garters made from a variety of different materials. The next step is to put on your corset. There are so many misconceptions in regards to corsets that we simply do not have the time to go over all of them in this video. Maybe we will have another artifact corner dedicated to dispelling some of the myths about them. A corset in the 1860s was not designed to make your waist smaller. It was designed to support your body and all of the layers of clothing you were wearing. If your corset was made to measure, it should fit quite comfortably. Following your corset, it was time for a petticoat or an underskirt. This was the layer that would protect your skin from the next garment, the cage crinoline or hoops. If you were an upper to middle class woman, you would most definitely be wearing these hoops. If you were lower or working class, you may not have these in your wardrobe. That did not mean working class women did not still try to achieve the fashionable silhouette of the time. Many women without the means would simply wear multiple petticoats to fill out the shape of their skirts. And that completes our undergarments. The next step was to cover the foundation garments a bit further. Women would wear a corset cover or a camisole. This was to protect your outer garments from anything on the corset that might snag it. Next, you would put your skirt on. This would be held up oftentimes with suspenders. The average outer skirt required up to five yards of fabric to make. Next, you would put your bodice on. Then you would put on your shoes. Once you were done, it was time to add decorative items like jewelry or hairpins. You would also want your gloves and bonnet. If it was hot outside, you would carry a folding fan made of sandalwood. If it was raining or bright and sunny, you might want to add a parasol to your ensemble. And if it was cold, you would bring a shawl or a mantle to ward it off. A woman would also not want to leave the house without her purse or bag. In this period, it was considered gauche for a lady to wear makeup. That's not to say that women didn't add a little color here and there to their cheeks and lips using beet juice or alkanet, a common weed that provides a lovely red dye. They would also accentuate their pale skin by powdering their faces with rice powder, zinc oxide, or pearl powder, which was a mixture of chloride of bismuth and French chalk. Chloride of bismuth is not a safe thing to put on your face. It can cause headaches, loss of appetite, and serious skin irritation. So please do not try any of these concoctions at home on yourself. Our portraits are of younger and older women dressed in their best clothes to have their picture taken. Their garments are very typical of the time period and the details are really beautiful. We are so lucky to have these lovely portraits in our collections. If you're interested in seeing a replica Civil War ladies garment up close, come visit us at the museum. We have one on display and we are open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 to 3. Thanks so much for stopping by.